California lab scientists say that they have made a key breakthrough in nuclear fusion. This is a technology with the potential to transform the global energy landscape. The major milestone in physics shows it may eventually be possible to recreate the energy of the sun in an earthbound power plant. We're joined this morning by Dr. Michael Cheney, a University of Central Florida physics professor. Dr. Cheney, a pleasure uh, to have you on the show. Good morning. Good morning. Happy to join. So help us understand, because sometimes this is difficult terminology when you hear the word fusion. Sometimes you've heard nuclear fission. What is nuclear fusion, and why is this such an historic deal? So nuclear fusion involves the combining of, of light atoms in to create a heavier atom. Um, and this is unlike fission, which is the, the nuclear power that powers our current nuclear power plants, which basically instead splits a heavy atom into several lighter, uh, lever, lighter particles. Um, now, fusion is, has several big advantages. So fusion is much more efficient than fission. Um, it releases several times the energy that it's, that's required to generate it. Um, and it also has advantages in terms of the lack of, uh, of nuclear waste that's generated um, in fusion. Now, the result that's coming out of the NIF, which is the National Ignition Facility in California, uh, involves using laser, high power laser beams in order to generate this fusion reaction. Um, so NIF is the, the most powerful laser in the world. Um, and basically what they do is they shoot 192 laser beams into a tiny cylinder, which is about the size of a pencil eraser, which contains a capsule of fuel that is consisting of hydrogen atoms. Now, basically what the lasers do is they, they create x-rays, which heat the capsule, causing it to implode. And it creates uh, conditions at the center of this capsule that are similar to the conditions at the center of our sun. Um, and this Basically, the capsule is filled with hydrogen atoms, which combine into helium. And this reaction, this, the fusion reaction at this, in this capsule causes uh, the emission of a, a great deal of energy. Okay, so we know that they've been working on this for quite some time. I mean, it's the 1950s since they've been trying to figure out how to do this and, and to get it into an energy source that we can use. But here, here's what I want us to try to explain to the viewers. Why is it so complicated? We, we mastered fusion or, or fission. Why is fusion such a tough thing to do? Why is it so complicated? Um, so this is something, I mean, so certainly fusion was predicted to be able to be possible with lasers back in the 1950s. It took several decades for the laser technology to evolve to the point where we could get high enough energy or high enough power in the lasers to do that. Um, at the same time, there are other ways to generate fusion. So, for example, by confining the plasma in uh, magnetic fields. The thing is that each, any of these experiments, they require extreme precision. So this, this tiny cylinder, it has to be, uh, it's engineered down to the nanometer scale. The lasers are engineered with precision down to like trillionths of a second. Um, and so everything has to go right in one of these experiments in order for, uh, for, for the fusion reaction to take place. And so we've seen major milestones take place in the last couple of years. So last year was the first uh, demonstration of conditions that, that looked like fusion. And, and now this year, we've seen the first energy gain from that process. Well, and, and that's exactly what I wanted to ask you about is this energy gain. If, if we're able to produce more energy uh, than the amount of energy that's put into it, if we're gaining more energy on the back end of this, why is that a good thing? What do we even do with this extra energy? Uh, so extra energy basically means that we can we can kind of create energy for free in in, in essence, um, and because hydrogen is is the most abundant element in the universe, um, this creates essentially a limitless power source that doesn't produce any carbon waste. It doesn't produce. It doesn't have any uh, greenhouse gas impact or any carbon footprint that we're that we're familiar with now. Um, and and so if if this could be leveraged into a technology that you know, could be could become power plants that power major power cities. Then this would be you know a free, abundant, um, and uh, and clean source of energy, which which we know we need in order for our planet to survive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here, here's what's coming to my mind, right? You, you say a, a free energy source. We can create a lot of it if we're able to master it. So the question is, how long can we possibly have to wait <laughs> to get here? Because it sounds fantastic. 
Yeah, so I'm optimistic. Now, if you if if you think about the NIF experiment that, that we're talking about, so this happened about last week, um, the amount of energy that they created was pretty small. So they created about 10 cents worth of energy. Um, and and so obviously we have a long way to go before we're creating enough energy to uh, to to really to power a city, for example. Um, now, NIF, while it's the most powerful laser facility in the world, it's also based on 1980s laser technology. In the last you know, four decades, we've come a long way in terms of laser technology from NIF. So while NIF can produce a laser shot approximately maybe once a day or once a week that can produce these, these conditions, um, new laser technology can produce thousands of shots per second, which is the which is what's needed for um, uh, for this kind of for for the to scale this uh, process. Um, so it's gonna it's gonna take some time. There's a lot of engineering uh, challenges ahead. There are scientific challenges ahead in terms of you know scaling this process so that instead of generating 10 cents of energy per week, you're generating you know many many times that per second. Um, but I'm I'm fairly optimistic. I, I think that the this kind of uh, I, I see this as as our generation's moonshot. So um, when Kennedy announced that we were going to the moon, we didn't really have a viable plan to get there. Um, but we had some some exciting reasons to go there, and I think the same is true in terms of fusion energy. Um, and so right now, what we're seeing is that you know the the federal government is starting to put money into fusion energy science. We're seeing a lot of investment from uh, uh, from private investors in terms of venture capital and private companies that are coming up. Um, so, like I said, I'm pretty optimistic. And in fact, I I made a bet with a, one of my more skeptical colleagues uh, yesterday up, upon the announcement of this news. Um, I bet him one kilogram of chocolate that within the next decade we would have a fusion power plant that's capable of powering a small city. Wow. Okay. Now, since I can't convert on the fly, how much is a kilogram of chocolate? Uh, it's it's about two pounds. Two okay. pounds. All right, that's a good bet. That's a good bet. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go in with you on this, uh, Dr. Cheney, <laughs> on on that. Uh, that would be exciting. And who knows, one day we could make this smaller and more portable power car. I mean, it's it's limitless what mm -hmm. we're uh, possibly discovering with this uh, with this new laser technology and infusion. Hey, well, first of all, thanks for your time. Thank you for helping us understand because mm -hmm. this is a complicated issue. If you're not a physicist, uh, of what is at stake and what's to come, and we hope the consistency of these experiments continue and and we see things change uh, in the future. So thanks for your time today again. All right. Thanks for having me.